Hey guys, it is Sunday, November 1st. I can't believe we're saying it's November 1st already. How fast the year has gone. It seems like the older I get, the faster time goes. You know, um, I remember when I was a kid, all the people used to tell me that. And I thought, oh, time's dragging on. I'm in fifth grade. It seems like it's forever or whatever grade I was in. But man, were they right. Or listen to your elders. They're wise. Um, listen, I am heading down to the off-grid cabin property today. And I know I had a uh, sub pipe in and say, hey man, it's far enough along now where you gotta have a name for that place. And you're right. So, in today's video, I'm gonna be asking uh, the viewers, you folks, you people, for um, a bunch of information. I want your expertise, your experience. Let's uh, share it here. This is this is what it's all about. Help, help building community through sharing experience, knowledge, and wisdom. Uh, first things first, you know, you guys, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you've seen kind of what the property looks like, and I've shown you videos of what it looks like around there. I got pine trees, I got scrub brush, I got gum trees, I got some hardwoods, I got a pond. Um, I want to have a cool name for this, you know. At home we call it camp. Uh, sometimes I affectionately refer to it as the shack or the cabin, but I'm looking for a name for the property, so that's number one. Uh, number two, I'm going to kind of show you my battery bank, talk about my solar system in this video, and I'm going to ask you for specifics as to uh, whether or not it's a good idea to rewire the battery bank from 12 volt to 24 volt, and I'll get into that in more detail when I'm down there on video. Uh, number three, you all uh, most likely have seen my off-grid water catchment system with the 275 gallon tote that was gifted to me uh, from my friend Jeff. Thanks again, Jeff. Well, I finally got that up and running. We got rain, it's full, uh, and it's miserable today, rainy and just nasty. It's 59 degrees, but it's just kind of yicky out. But um, the cold weather's coming, and you know what? It gets cold in South Carolina, and we dip below freezing, so do I need to drain this thing? Am I in danger of having it split open and, and ruined on me? Or can I get away with keeping it uh, hopefully full and not having a problem? My gut says drain it, but I've had some people say, oh, I don't think you'll have a problem. Uh, I'd rather be safe than sorry, but I want to get your input on it. I do have it wrapped in black plastic, but this time of year it will not receive direct sunlight, so I don't know how much warming that's going to do. So give me your thoughts on that, and we'll go over it more in detail in this video. Thanks. All right, gang, it is raining down here. It still sounds nice. It's pretty out. Well, not really pretty, but you understand what I'm saying. Anyway, um, so here, here's another thing I was going to ask you all about. Let me, uh, let me show you. Right here on the other side of this wall, on the other side of this cabinet, is my battery box. It's inside. I've had a lot of people say, oh, you need to vent them. They are sealed. Most of them are lithium ion. Um, they do not off gas any of them, so I don't have to keep them outside. Uh, but, I'm thinking for, from a space constraint and possibly some safety as well. Should I build a box out here, I could use those piston hinges that I showed you in a video from last week as um, is, is the top of the box go up and down. I can lock it. It'll be out here. Insulate the heck out of it. Um, is it worth the trouble? That's, that's a big pain in the butt to do that. But if I go ahead and rewire my um, 12 volt battery bank to 24 volt and hear me out so I got 24 volt panels up there now I used to have 12 volts those are 24 volts my battery bank is 12 volts still wired for 12 volt my charge controller converts to 24 volts and charges the 12 volt battery bank so my charge controller will handle either a 12 or 24 volt input and it will detect the uh, the voltage on the bank and then charge it accordingly um, what am I gaining by going 24 volts inside? I'm sure that I'm losing something going from 24 out here to uh, 12 on the battery bank. But I need somebody that knows about solar to be able to say, oh yeah, this is what you're losing. And you know, if you rewire your battery bank to 24 volt, it'll increase your um, efficiency or increase your this or whatever by X amount of percent. I know there's those of you out there that know that much about solar and can help me with that. So if, uh, if you can answer me that question, maybe I'll be able to do both simultaneously. I'll build the box outside, get the batteries outside, which will allow me more space under the table in there. May even allow me to reconfigure the inside, take that table out, put shelves, whatever, um, and get the batteries out here. 
the, the only negative is that when I'm down here and I'm heating the inside, those batteries wouldn't uh, benefit from that heat. But that's rare. And so, you know, they're going to be cold down here regardless in the winter time, whether they're inside or outside. And if I have them well insulated with some of that foam board insulation that I have that you saw in one of my other videos, I should be A-OK. -okay. So the only thing that it would cost me is the time and whatever materials that I probably have laying around to build the battery box, which not a big deal. All right, holler at me, let me know what's what. Okay, so you saw what it looks like outside. I'm not doing any work outside today, but I've been putting off um, finishing up the ceiling inside for a day like today. So I have some spots that I didn't screw down. It wasn't super uniform. So there's some spots that were popping out up there a little bit. And I said, I'll get to it later. So I'm going back through today. I'm gonna to try to um, screw them all down nice and firm and add screws where necessary. And uh, I'm gonna use some boiled linseed oil protects and seals wood. So I'm gonna put that on the wood and see what it looks like. And I'll show you guys here in a bit what it looks like. All right, guys, um, I know the light's horrible up here. I got a flashlight to hopefully help brighten it up a little bit. Um, I just put boiled linseed on this wood here and I don't see a big difference. I mean, that that looks, <laughs> honestly, I, I don't think the work in doing this is gonna justify it. I just don't see a big difference in the wood. I don't know if it does anything. Um, maybe mineral oil, maybe I don't have to do anything. I mean, I'm not averse to just leaving it the way that it is. I don't have to do something in here. Um, anyway, give me your thoughts, thanks. All right, guys, again, I know the lighting is not great in here. I apologize for that. Um, here's my battery box on the inside. Kind of back up and show you best I can. Uh, my inverter's in there. That is a modifying sine wave um, inverter from Harbor Freight. I think it's the 2000 watt um, continuous version. It's been doing a pretty good job on just about everything I got down here. Got three outlets, I got a watt meter in there, and it's got a USB um, out port, uh, a USB port, so I charge some USB stuff on there. I wired a couple of meters in there. One of the white, one of the meters broke, so I only have the meter on the battery box. It's 13.3. Since then, I've gotten a new charge controller, and it's got a meter on it, so I really don't need that anymore. Um, so here's my question, guys, because I have plenty of questions today. In addition to rewiring this for a 24 volt bank. I wanted to know if I should go ahead and get a pure sign inverter. Um, I'm thinking a thousand watts because that's normally what it, you know, that's more power than I would normally ever need. On occasion I will plug in and use um, power tools in this but more often than not I won't do that because some of the power tools will actually spike it and pop the breaker or blow the fuse. So I just use the generator for the power tools. Thousand watt pure sine wave inverter because sometimes on my TV I get the DVD player making a funny noise and it gets weird. Um, I also have like buzzing on a couple of different things around here. Like uh, I have those radio controlled outlets that I can plug in and I use a, ra a remote control to turn um, lights on and off. That'll buzz, which it doesn't do if I plug in a cleaner power. So I'm thinking about getting a pure sine wave inverter, thousand watts. And I'm also thinking about possibly getting a second one of those charge controllers. And the thought behind that is I can add more panels. I don't, again, I don't know that I need it. I'm thinking about it. Give me your thoughts on that stuff. I'm, I'm interested to hear what you think, especially if you have some real practical uh, experience in this stuff. Thanks. So more on the solar. Uh, you can see I've, I got 35.1 volts coming in on the solar panels. And let me go over here. Uh, it steps it down to 13.2 and bring it in two and a half amps. Um, so that's just a little more information in case you'll need it when uh, coming up with an answer for me on some of the other questions that I asked. Scrolling through here. See, the thing with this is this isn't accurate. It's not 64%. I walked in here, you know, 10 minutes ago and turned everything on. It was at 100%. The uh, charge controller was flashing. So I'm not exactly sure how to get that accurate or if I just live with it. I don't know. 
All right, more questions. So I got to get to the trim phase here. I'm going to trim out these windows, but I'm not exactly sure what I have to do. I've never trimmed out windows before. So I'll show you what I got. And um, do I have to? It looks like I probably should come in with some type of a trim board in there and put it all the way up and around and then put some sort of a trim molding on it. Again, I'm sorry for this terrible light. I hope it's showing up good enough on video to where you all can see what I'm looking at. Um, so give me an idea what I need to do. I know I got to put some molding board around there after, I'm guessing after I trim it out, I'm guessing I have to put some type of board in there, or do I? Is that already, is that board already the trim? I'm crying out loud, I don't know. Help a brother out, give me your thoughts. Man, it has been raining hard all day long. It's ridiculous. Well, I can't get over it. You know, we could use a break, but it's coming down hard. Nice and dry inside here, though. All right, I'm leaving. I just want to show you what I'm looking at here. Look at the water, the standing water. It was nowhere near like this when I pulled in. But my own, it really... Uh, it's really started to ramp up here. I'm gonna run over these logs and see what's what. It's gonna ba boom. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bottom right out on that sucker. Holy moly, man. Like I was telling you, I was showing you. Got a ton of water today. It is rushing down through here. I'm gonna have to do some work to this road. I need me a tractor. And by the way, I saw one on the way over. It's a, it's a front end loader with a backhoe on it. Guy wants $8,000. I am going to be calling him to learn more about it. So I'll keep you all posted. If I end up getting something, I'll make sure I put a video up about it. And of course, you'll see me working on it like crazy. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.